Hi everybody, it's me Maddie, and welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Maddie, and I post book I post bookish related content every single Monday. So if that sounds like something you would like, subscribe, please. And today I am doing a monthly wrap up. I usually do bi monthly wrap ups, but <laughs> I'm doing one for November because September and October's wrap up was ridiculously long and I don't want to have to deal with that again. So I'm starting monthly wrap ups early and I'm doing one for November and I'll do one for December uh, when it comes time. But in the month of November I read five books um, and I read two short stories based off of books I've read earlier this year and I will explain those when I get to them but if we go to my phone and you excuse, excuse those two short stories then I have read 49 books this year 49 like I'm gonna hit 50 this year and that's like unbelievable to me so just Mind is blown. Mind's blown. Alright, so let's just hop into the wrap up with the first book I ended up reading in the month of November. We did not start off good, nor did we end good. So we started off with Hollow Pox, The Hunt for Morgan Crow by Jessica Townsend, and I gave this a 2 out of 5, while my granny gave it a 3 out of 5. I was very, very excited for this book because this is the third book in the Nevermore series, which is, well, oh, they were one of my favorite like my favorite books of last year was Nevermore and uh, Wondersmith. So I had really high hopes for this book and sadly it disappointed me really, really bad. Um, this book was just really boring in my opinion and I don't think, I think a lot of this, like this wasn't necessary. I don't know what the uh, wonder disease the hollow pox, what the hollow pox was even like, it's not going to add anything to the next books in the series. The only really important things that were in this book were a new school and the ending. And I feel like those could have been introduced um, at the beginning of the next book, which then would have been the third book instead of this being the third book, because this I just felt like was a waste of money and just a waste of time, and it was really boring, and I had to force myself through a Nevermore book, which is very, very sad um, and disappointing. And my granny also thought this was really boring. She didn't like the ending, though. I actually kind of like the ending, but I, I expect more Ezra in the next book. And if there isn't more Ezra in the next book, then I'm done with this Nevermore world. Because the way this book ends, there, it's, it sounds like there's going to be a lot more Ezra. And Ezra is personally my favorite character of the entire series. So if there isn't more Ezra in book four, then I'm done with Nevermore. Uh, so yeah, the first book in the series is called Nevermore, and it is about Morgan, who was cursed to die on her 11th birthday, but on her birthday, she ends up going to a thing called Bid Day, where people, or like, big businesses bid on children for like apprentices and stuff like that and she ends up getting I think four bids and one of those bids is from a guy named Jupiter North and uh, Jupiter ends up saving her from her destiny to be killed and sweeps her off to Nevermore where she must complete in trials to stay in Nevermore and become a member of the Wondrous Society. I'm not very good at descriptions but Nevermore is such a good book um, the series is going downhill, but the first book is really, really good, and I really enjoy it. So the next book I ended up finishing in November was The Titan's Curse. This is the third book in the Percy Jackson series, and I gave this a 5 out of 5 star, and my granny gave it a 4. I adored this book so much. It's up there with my favorite compared to the first one. I think the first one is just a little bit better, but I did still really enjoy this one. I really enjoyed Bianca and Nico being introduced into the Percy Jackson world. I enjoy Percy um, and his growth in this book, and I'm very, I loved what he said at the end and like his decision uh, about the prophecy. I really, really loved that, but we knew it was good 
going to do it. But I still really liked that. I like him and Annabeth's friendship and I don't know. I really like it. I don't really think I can say much on this series because anything I like about it, pretty much everyone else has already said about it. But I do really, really like this. And Percy Jackson, oh god, if you don't know what Percy Jackson about, I'm sorry because I'm about to give you a really bad description of it. It is about Percy who finds out that he is the son of a god and basically has to go to um, a camp for half-bloods as they're called and while once he gets there he finds out that he's part of a prophecy and that's like the series entire plot but the first book uh, which is not this book. The first book is when Percy has to travel around the world, around the United States, and get back a lightning bolt for Zeus before the gods have a war. That's such a bad description of it. Like, you come to my channel for bad descriptions. Like, like Murphy made a video with her husband about bad descriptions. Like, she should just came to me because I could, I'm... I'm perfect at bad descriptions. I don't know. But the first book is so good, and I I just, I love this series so much, and uh, I think I'm going to be, fin I think my granny and I are finishing it when it comes, before the end of 2021. So, I'm very excited to finish this series, because I really, really like it, and I love this series so much. Alright, and then I read two short stories. I read a bonus Keefe story by Shannon Messenger. This is the short story that was at the end of the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition of Nightfall. And I gave this a 5 out of 5 star. I liked it. I like Keefe's point of view. This is really cute because it's right before he gifts Sophie something that he gifts her in Nightfall. And I really, really liked reading from that. And then I also read the Red Pearl bonus scene by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I gave this 4 out of 5. I did not like it as much as I like Keefe's, but I did still enjoy it. I thought that was okay, but I feel like it was kind of pointless of me to read it because I'm not going to be continuing on in the series, I don't believe. So, yeah, but we got a 5 and a 4 star short story, so there we go. Alright, and then my granny and I, and I finally ended up finishing and reading The School for Good and Evil by Somaine Chayani. I don't think I pronounced his name right at all. This is about Sophie, who, Sophie and Agatha, who live in this little town where people are, two people are kidnapped every four years, I believe. And um, one of the kids goes to the school for bad and becomes the villains that they read in storybooks. And one of the other kids goes to the school for good, where and that's like the princess or the prince that they end up reading in uh, future storybooks. And basically, Sophie is like she believes that she is a good uh, person, and so she wants to be kidnapped and go to the school for good. But Agatha doesn't want to go there, and she is just Sophie's friend. But when Sophie ends up getting kidnapped, Agatha chases after her, and Sophie ends up going to the school for evil while Agatha is in the school for good. Um, a lot happens in this book, but I found it really boring. It took me like 150 pages to actually get into the book, and then it ended up taking me just a long time to enjoy this book. There were moments when I would really, really be enjoying this, and then like like a, like a flip of the switch, you turn the page, and I was bored again, even when you had the trial by tail, which is kind of like a, like, who's evil, like, who's the best villain, who's the best princess or prince type of thing. Um, I thought that would be more entertaining than it actually was. It was actually pretty boring and pretty disappointing. Um, and then the ending came along and it was a horrible ending. This is one of the worst endings I have ever read. Like, there was a point, even though I had, uh, taken me so long to get into the book, there was a point of reading this I thought it was going to be five out of five star. Uh, and then, you know, I continued reading, I was like, nah, it's probably going to be a four, and then I got to the end, and I was like, what is even happening? Like, it felt like the author had so many plot points that he wanted to put into the world, he wanted so many things to happen in this book, but then he got to the end, and he found like he had like a whole list of things that he didn't get to include, so he cut them up, and put them in a hat, and just started picking and then he realized that he just he picked all of them out of the out of the book and he made them all happen in 20 pages and the the ending is just an absolute mess and 
my granny didn't like the ending either, so I know it just wasn't me, but the ending was so stupid, and I had to read the synopsis of the second book to even figure out how this book had even ended, so... I don't know, but I finally read this book. I've owned it since like 2015, I think. So this is like the longest book on my TBR, and I finally read it. So at least I can say I've read it and I'm done with it. And that's, that's good. This, what am I even saying? Dude, I don't know how to describe this book because that's a horrible description. But this is about Azoth. Um, okay, we'll go again. Third time's the charm. Third time's a charm. Pfft, never on my channel. Okay. So the next book I ended up reading in November was the only book that I read on my own. And so I read five books this month and four of them I read with my granny. So I don't know why I didn't read much this month, but I just didn't. But I did read this book and it was amazing. And that is The Way of Shadows by Brent Weeks. I gave this a 5 out of 5 star rating. I absolutely, and like, was, I love this book. This is going to be one of my favorite books of 2020. Spoiler alert, it's just so, so good. Like, it fights uh, the Phoenix host for that top spot. That's how much I loved this book. I was bored, um when we weren't reading from Kyler's point of view, when we were reading from, like, Solon or Dorian or Sergeant something's point of view. I was bored then, but I did really, really love this book. And, um, I don't want to talk much on it because I have an entire, uh, video where I read this that's coming out late January of 2021. But this is about Azoth, who is a guild rat, and basically... He's grown up on the streets and in the slums, and he actually ends up becoming the apprentice to an assassin by who is like a real like the best assassin. His name is Durzo, and he ends up becoming his apprentice. He has to change his name to Kyler, and um, he must learn to navigate the assassin's world of dangerous politics and strange ma magics, and cultivate a fair a flair for death. That's all I know how to describe this book, unless I just read the entire description. This book is so hard to describe because so much happens in this 600-page, like, book. But it was so good, and I really, really loved it. And I'm very excited to read the sequel. Granted, I actually haven't seen very good things about it. It still has a 4.5 like, average on Goodreads, but, like, the first 15 reviews that popped up were two stars. And I'm scared now. Because uh, I was going to buy the box set, and then I saw that. I was like, um, maybe I won't. But I did really, really love this, and uh, I'm very excited to share the video where I feature this with you guys. So, 5 out of 5 for this one. The best book I read in November by far. Well, Titan's Curse was pretty good. But I'm going to have to say, this is the best book of November. And then the final book I ended up reading in November, uh, I posted an unboxing for. I posted a reading and rant, spoiler alert, uh, video on, and I will leave those linked at the end of the video. Uh, but that was Unlocked, the eighth, the ninth book, but it's 8.5 by Shannon Messenger in the Keeper of the Lost City series. I, I, I gave this one star. I don't know. I don't give books one star, but I gave this one one star. I have an entire rant on it, um, which I can take out the bookmark before I finish. I don't know why that's still there. Um, but yes, I gave this a one star. My granny gave it a three. I am very disappointed in this book. I did not like it. Basically, I have an entire Goodreads review on it, and I feel like my Goodreads review explains my opinions on this book so much better than I could ever explain uh, verb verbally, uh, so I'll leave that down below. But I was just really disappointed in this book. I had really high hopes. Like, I was like, you know what? Hollow Box was bad, but this is Keeper. It can't get worse than Never Seen. It got worse than Never Seen. Because this was pointless. I do really like the photos. And my granny said, like, the, like the only reason she's giving it, like, a three is because of the images in it. And it's, they're really pretty, gorgeous images. But 
it's it's pointless. It's just it's, it's so stupid. It's such a waste of space, honestly. Because like I had to reorganize my entire keeper shelf to fit this in there, and now it doesn't look as good as it once did. I ain't as good as I once was. And so waste of space. I'm very disappointed. I don't I I, I don't want to start ranting about it again because I'm going to if I don't stop talking about it. But the ending was really dumb. It, like, nothing really happened in it. Um, I, this book was not marketed very well because it didn't say anywhere that this is going to literally be a textbook of information that, you know, a, a longtime fan or even just somebody who's binged the books this year would already know. Never said anything about that. But guess what? That's what this was. So... Very disappointing. I do want to read the ninth book. If the ninth book is not the final book, I don't know what we're going to do because Shannon, you're going in circles, baby. You're just going in circles. Uh, so I really hope the ninth book is the last book. I'm purely reading for Keefe because Keefe is the best character ever. Sorry, Dex. I mean, Dex is a great character, but it, he's like been written out. So Keefe's like the only good character now. Um, so yeah, those are the books I read in November. I hope you guys liked this November wrap-up, and even though it was just, uh, one month, this is still a ridiculously long video. Good thing that's plastic. Uh, we're not surprised, are we? No. We're not. But yeah, like I said, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give it a big fat thumbs up. And subscribe down below because I post videos on this channel every single Monday. Comment down below the favorite book you read in November. And what was your least favorite? My favorite? Boom. Least favorite? <laughs> Boom. I'd rather read Holopox four times over than even have to look at Unlocked, so... If that doesn't describe my opinions, then I don't know what will. I'm gonna go love you all so very much because I'll next time for the video. And hey, don't forget, I'm still a freaking bulldozer. Bye, everyone. I forgot to tell you what Keeper's about, but then again, it's one of my videos. When do I ever tell you what Keeper's about? But you know what? Bye, everyone.